my background is uh, before hip hop was actually hip hop. We we just had you know, normal urban culture, and I grew up in Spanish, between Spanish Harlem and the South Bronx. So at that time, it was. You always had music in the streets and dancing. Was, the graffiti movement was already happening. Um, and so by the time I was maybe around 10 or so, that's when, you know, really in the South Bronx, birth hip hop really started coming, coming uh, about. And so um, as a young kid, I started seeing trains and writing all over the community. And I was like, wait, who's this? Why are they doing it and how? And I just started. I started tagging, and someone introduced me to better markers. And one thing led to another, and my brother and I got into it and uh, decided early on that we wanted to be style masters because we started seeing these really sophisticated graffiti letters, and that was just hard to read but had a lot of style. And so that's what we were aiming for, and we kind of committed ourselves to it and then just realized like this whole community was already happening. And then uh, by being on the west side as well, I got connected with Ken Swift and Doze and the Rocksteady crew when they were starting to you know, form. This is the second generation of Rocksteady and Legs as well. So um, I was part of that crew in the very early stages back then, but I wasn't a B-boy, I was a writer. Uh, Rocksteady had writers, the B-Boys, and the DJs and MCs. So my history really kind of crosses from pre-hip-hop then to, you know, the, the very early days when it, it was kind of quote-unquote coined hip-hop. Well, I think at the time, like I said, my brother and I, we were looking at style masters. Um, so there were names like Stay High 149, and Phase 2 and Case 2, Knock 67, Riff, and uh, names that, names that you know, unfortunately are kind of get obscured over time and unless we bring them up, I, these are very, very important people in the culture. Uh, and we, early on, because we love the culture itself, we really um, paid homage to these guys throughout our whole careers. We always looked at them and, and wanted to learn about them. Uh, and then, you know, later on we started writing. As we got better, we, my influences were like people I painted with, you know, Dondi and Crash and Min and others. And so I had a really good, like, super elite crew of people around me. It's great. Well, my, my generation was the one, well, you know what, I can't take credit for that. The generation before me started laying the, found, the foundations for what a lot of what we see now. And I have to credit Phase 2 a lot for that because he was such an innovator in terms of how we were looking at this idea of ourselves in terms of art and culture. And, you know, one of the great things that I actually learned along the way as we started coining hip hop and its elements was like the fifth element, this knowledge of self. And so with, with that, I started really taking consideration as to who was doing what before me. And that generation before me was already um, looking at itself as with the possibility of uh, doing gallery shows, uh, painting on canvas, uh, making sculpture. Uh, phase two did a sculpture in 1984. It was one of the first ones, and that's about the time I started. Uh, and media, he was publishing International Graffiti Times, and he was also a graphic designer, famously him and Buddy Esquire and others for the flyers, the hip hop flyers. So it was interesting to to see that the culture itself was kind of aspiring um, to to promote itself, to build itself out from just, you know, the, the ghetto. Um, I, and I think for me, ultimately, like during the 80s, when, the, when we started to um, cross over, well, even before that, because in 1980, I saw a Picasso show 
with my good friend Henry Chalfant and that's where I really kind of made this connection between graph uh, uh, and cubism and modernism really. And I was like, wait a minute, these lines, this, this whole idea of abstraction feels familiar to me. Um, and then, I, then the big question after that was like, well, who are we in all of this? This whole generation, this clusterfuck of people, like, what does it stand for? Like, where, where do we stand in the arc of history? And I started getting into art history and culture history and stuff like that. Just, it, that's out of defense, self-defense. That's what it came about. And so um, by 82, 83, we started showing in galleries and uh, and from there it just kind of started, you know, moving into different spaces, commercial work and uh, traveling, things like that. A lot of things that we, we didn't quite expect. A lot of us took different routes in terms of our art form. I, when I was in high school, I was like studying fashion design and applying, trying to apply graffiti to, to it, which was unusual. I mean, I really, uh, it's interesting because I didn't quite understand why I was in there. And I realized later on that it was the sculpting, it was that forming that was part of what I was trying to get at. And uh, so in terms of how we were developing, um, even just not just the writers that the, the MCs as you know as prolific writers and DJs as producers and uh, you know the b-boys as choreographers all this stuff started bubbling and happening and we were influencing each other you know both in school in the neighborhood and in the clubs um, so you know you know this all happened rather quickly we were just like catching this momentum uh, and so for me, by uh, 1984, I thought this has to change because the canvas, graffiti on canvas, I was a fine artist. And I was like, you know what, as a challenge to my peers and, and kind of an homage to history too, to, to them. Uh, and my attitude uh, was like, well, I, I'm going to burn them all. You know, it's kind of that b-boy mentality. And so I did the sculpture, metal sculptures, and I just never stopped being a sculptor. You know, the thing is that what I like about the, the element of, of hip hop and some of the practitioners that is interdisciplinary. So that's like, you don't do one thing, you know, you could be like nowadays, you, you know, your cameraman could be a B-boy MC and a DJ and it's cool. You know, we, we are picking up all these new skills to advance our, our interests, right? And so, um, you know, we see that, we saw that very early on in terms of, you know, um, as, as, as a matter of fact, once technology started merging into it, the culture, you start seeing a lot of us, my, I, me, myself, my brother and I, Kel, we were the first ones in technology, in the culture, building the first website, interactive company. Um, I was the first to win a Webby Award, which is the equivalent of an Oscar for the tech field. And it was kind of like, wait a minute, why not? Like, why? Like, that's the whole thing about this whole spirit is like that. Why not? Well, we'll figure it out. We'll do it ourselves. And um, yeah, that's kind of. We always had the impetus to say, look, you know what? If you're not going to give us room, we're going to make room for ourselves. And so, and that's across the board. And and now there's there's no there's not one discipline we haven't touched from architecture, to jewelry design, to film, onward. What I like about Why Not is that he's curious. One, he's passionate, uh, and then he's curious, and he's willing to try uh, new things and apply himself outside of dance. And, it, you, you know, usually sometimes dancers can't see themselves outside of dance, or even connect their dance to other disciplines. And that's, that's really, I think, where he's at right now. He's like, well, I'm a writer, I'm a b-boy, I can DJ, MC if I have to. And, and that, to me, is kind of like, you know, the renaissance man of the culture. And I, I, I admire that because what that does, it allows him to bridge um, all that, that he's learning, not just from me, from legs, from his travels, from the world, into whatever he does. So in that sense, when young people are looking up to him and saying like, 
wait a minute, this is a worldly man, but also a b-boy and also a painter, a sculptor, whatever he wants to do, you know, he'll, he'll apply himself to. And, and I think that kind of, in this day and age, that is, you, you know, one of the um, best examples of, of what we could, we could be in this culture because he's also very much into teaching and inspiring others. And so if he can pass that on, not just in, in the form of dance, like if I can't dance and they see like, yo, why not? You're a dope style writer, let me get some style. Well, then again, he's passing a little bit of something off. And so in, in, in that sense, that, that's where I, I really admire that about what he's doing with his life. So my message to, to young people is either Stay passionate about what you do, and if you're not passionate, at the very least, stay curious and 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 learn and apply yourself to different things and take the examples of, of your peer group, right? Somebody like Why Not, who's you know multidisciplinary. Uh, you have you know the elders too, who tend to do things in, in different spaces. Like ask yourself, how do they do it? Talk to them, uh, reach out to them. Um, but also, you know, to really try to find purpose in how you advance this conversation. Um, it, it, is, it, is, it is one thing for us old timers to be fixed in our tradition, which is fine, but that's not enough. The world moves on. And what I like is that I also look to young people to get inspired, to learn. I even copy things that I see. It's, you know, that's, that's the culture, that's how it was. It's a give and take, right? And so in this day and age, when I see um, the opportunities I get that are brought about even by young people who are organizing themselves around community, um, that's really important that you engage in that because it can't always be the museums, it can't always be, you know, the big companies that endorse you. Um, it could start, it starts local and that, in that way, you have to kind of build community around yourself and your mission and also, you know, feed off each other to make something new or better. Uh, you know, and part of that is, you know, it comes back to something I care deeply about is education, like hip hop education. And also, really, the fifth element, right, knowledge of self, which is probably the most powerful of them all. And, and that if you can investigate that, you know, um, deeper, which is a mission in life, right? We have to kind of get to know ourselves better and what we do and others. That all working from that place, you get richer. You get, you get to, like I said to you earlier, you know, the way I managed to get richer was to ask those questions, you know, about myself and more importantly, myself in the scheme of things, in the scheme and the, the whole arc of life as an artist, not just now, but in the past. And that's why writers will say, well, the first writers were cavemen. So that's, we inherited that, right? So it's, it's a process of it being inheriting things. And one of the things that we see, especially in the b-boy culture, and you know, why not, is very respectful to this, is that he knows he's inherited this amazing, amazing history from all of us. And he knows that he has to pass that on. And so he's that young generation that everybody's looking to. Uh, yes, they still look to us older guys, the Ken Swifts and the, crazy legs and the storm and you know, all those guys yes those guys we, we matter but you know what that you know we are advancing in age not that we're not capable but we're doing it differently we don't have the energy that young people have so and that's the whole thing young people you have to make use of that young energy uh, in the context of where you are to make the art of your time